The information that you hear today will be shared on our YouTube page, which is uh, NCLA Remco, and you can view this content at any time should there be errors um, watching the webinar today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Um, Darmilari, are you ready to go? Yes, of course. Ready. Thank you, Ms. Lily. Okay, okay. Um, so we're going to jump right into these questions. Um, Library Aid Africa is a nonprofit that seeks to make technology access and digital literacy equitable to all communities in Africa. How has COVID impacted your services today? Okay, um, so the pandemic for the last year uh, it has really affected our work as an organization. Uh, however, it has further helped us to, to explore more creative ways to drive progress and engage the community living with digital technology. Okay, uh, first and foremost, that we couldn't really go into the community to work on learning outreach programs, and we now have to reframe uh, our concept and ideas for our projects. Okay, what major in impact it had on us last year was Library Soft 2020, uh, which libraries were closed across uh, Africa and across participating countries for last year. And that was a major challenge because the, the community, the participants still uh, do not understand libra library as, as an online space. We still have this notion of library as a physical space. And because of this, we had to redefine the open concept to explore uh, promoting Reading, reading at home, okay? So while people are at home, you can take library stuff in your home while you're studying or while you have, uh, where, or at home with your personal library. So this really helped us to, to redefine our focus and organization and to prioritize our, our approaches because uh, we need to be able to reach people uh, in their various locations because uh, a lot of people in the African continent still have this perspective of libraries as a physical space, not uh, an e-library Platform. Also, they understanding the fact that they can also have libraries uh, in their own various uh, homes. Okay, and aside that, looking at the challenges that we faced, we, we felt uh, there's need for us to further improve on how we can uh, engage library stakeholders on the continent and how they can drive progress for libraries while uh, libraries were closed, basically using, using digital technology tools so for library services. So we had a series of virtual consultations last year where we brought library stakeholders together in a, in, a, in a single online forum to get data from them on what we are facing in the various countries. And this led us to publish an, a, a course structure and guide for African libraries and librarians to provide library services uh, to their users. So in essence, I would say it has really affected us in, 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 in a very bad way. However, we've seen it as, a, as an opportunity to improve and to further uh, drive progress for libraries on the African continent, okay? And, and, and because of this process, we realized that uh, libraries on the African continent, uh, for libraries to improve service delivery, uh, even post COVID-19 and during, during, during the global pandemic, okay, three things needs to be addressed, all right? Uh, library leadership role, which have been told to play to drive progress for libraries. And number two, moving libraries to data, all right? There's some basic technological tools that can be used by library professionals to offer services delivery, which some librarians don't even know how to use them. So, and also having this digital infrastructure available to drive progress is also essential because some libraries, uh, majorly public libraries, uh, lack this digital infrastructure to offer library services to their clients in the course of the global pandemic. And also imagine skills and training for library professionals because if these facilities are in place and librarians lack the skills and capacity to use this, to use this infrastructure, then it will be useless. That's why we, we came up to the three major Focus, which is library leadership role, uh, moving libraries to data, and imagine skills and training for library professionals on the African continent. Thank you. Um, what is your government's current view on libraries, and how are Nigeria's libraries uh, typically funded? I think we talked about this a little bit in the last session, but for those who weren't present, if you would just discuss it again, please. Okay, so library funding in Nigeria is, is based on library type because there are different types of libraries, uh, as you know. And um, I will start with academic libraries. Academic libraries are libraries in high schools of learning, and they're being funded by the current institutions, okay? Uh, but public libraries are being funded by the government, okay, of each state in Nigeria. And that is, these are the libraries that really face 
the major challenge in terms of availability of resources uh, to, to serve their users, okay? So public libraries are put by the government to taxpayers' money, okay? And, and libraries in, 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 in private schools are funded by their institutions, okay? And libraries in public or uh, primary secondary schools are funded by the government. So uh, library funding is dependent on the type of libraries, okay? If it's a public library, is it funded by the public, by, by the government or, or the particular state or community? Or if it's, a, if it's a, an academic library, is it funded by, by its institution, okay? And there are libraries that are, that are being set up by individuals uh, to drive literacy developments in communities. Uh, so these libraries are funded by individual people, uh, philanthropies who have passion for knowledge development uh, in diverse communities. And right now, what would you say that your current uh, government's view is on public libraries in Nigeria? Do you know? Well, I do not have any data to back up anything I'm going to say about this. However, based on my work uh, in the library space in Nigeria and other countries for the past four years, I would say there's a sort of uh, negligence on the government's part to improve on library development. Okay. As a matter of fact, in Nigeria, National Library of Nigeria's headquarters has been under construction for over a decade. Yeah, and it, it, it shows a negligence given to uh, library development in the country, all right? So when you look at these trends and you look at some public libraries across, this, across the country that lacks infrastructure to provide services, last year at the height of the pandemic when there was lockdown, libraries were closed and libraries couldn't offer the library services to their clientele. That, that was that bad. And it shows, it shows that infrastructure is lacking and even capacity is lacking. Mm -hmm. So but governments have a role to play to bring about policies, policies, uh, infrastructures, and, and, and funds that will support and aid this process. All right? So, you know, it's, 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 it's a long-term battle which our library advocates and library stakeholders in, in Africa needs to work towards. However, for, for us to convince the government on the need to improve more on library development, okay, we need data to back up our claims, all right? Do we have data on what libraries are doing? No, we do not. So how do you convince policymakers to say, uh, libraries are doing ABCD, let's invest more on libraries to do more? No. Because the world we live now is, is driven by data, all right? And if you're not making data informed decisions, nobody's gonna listen to you. So, mm -hmm. on that part, uh, it's a huge concern. And that is one of the major reasons why we focus our efforts on advocacy. And now we're collecting data about libraries in Nigeria as a pilot, which we plan to expand to the African countries as time goes on. What would you say that your current uh, relationship is with uh, school librarians um, at the academic institutions? What would you say your relationship is with them right now? Okay, uh, in terms of our relationship with libraries in Nigeria, uh, I would say we have a very good rapport and relationship with libraries to put us in Nigeria and other African countries like Rwanda, Namibia, Zimbabwe, among others because through our work, we've been able to, to, to work with them and have some, some dialogue with them in their various uh, uh, spaces, okay? So um, the library space in, in, in Africa is, is, is not really different as to what you have there. But however, our relationship are, are much more directed to library stakeholders like um, library associations. However, we also work directly with some libraries which you have uh, direct access to, okay? So, uh, but the best way we're looking at improving our relationship more with libraries on the continent and the librarians to be specific is to explore further areas to, to complement and supplement what they do with our programs, all right? Uh, through programs and initiatives that will position libraries as strategic partners uh, for development in diverse communities, uh, leveraging digital technology and citizen and approach to drive progress and policy reform for libraries. So uh, to work on with libraries, uh, we, have, we work with them, okay? I have a, we're exploring with funds knowledge on how best uh, we can further improve that relationship uh, through programs that will position libraries as, as partners in development. And that is why we said last, last time that we were working on library tracker to get data about what libraries are doing 
And that's why we're doing library stuff, because library stuff is focused basically to promote libraries on the African continent. So with our initiative that we're bringing on board, we are focused solely on amplifying what libraries are doing to drive progress on the African continent. Okay, so our approach has been promoting what libraries are doing, uh, making libraries known in our communities, and uh, creating uh, a, a, a grant for libraries to say they are doing A, B, C to drive development in our society. Because when they're able to say that, then get the attention of policymakers and rural stakeholders to invest more in library development on the African continent. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to mention. Um... I um, did not say in the very beginning, if you all have questions, you can put those questions in the chat. Uh, we will answer those questions at the end of today's session. So that's my bad, I did forget. Um, Dar uh, Damilari, could you go into a little bit about what your hopes um, are for a library tracker? What do you hope that communities will get from using that app? Okay, so uh, first and foremost, Library Tracker seeks to uh, collect data about libraries across uh, Africa, starting in Nigeria as a pilot, and also facilitate geolocation of libraries uh, through the mobile lab, okay? And that is the, the first of its kind of project that, that is leveraging on um, contemporary technology to get data about libraries for access and dissemination, okay? So the issue is that I realized that for us to know where libraries are located, okay, the platform to get to see where this library is located, okay? What services do they offer? How can they reach them? What have they done? I get to my point. And, 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 and what services do they, do they even offer in those libraries? That's what brought about library trophy. We're trying to create solutions to access to libraries and knowledge, okay? Because you go to a new city, you need a library to use, you can just go and hop and go check what your libraries are, as 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 these libraries and, and where to where to get libraries in, in a particular community. So and aside that, uh, what is much more important to us is the data that we're collecting uh, across these libraries. And the use of this data is much more essential for advocacy work with policymakers to with with stakeholders to engage more with libraries on, in Nigeria and Africa as a continent. Okay, so for now. So the library tracker in Nigeria as a pilot uh, on, on an 18 month project, which we commenced last year. And after the pilot, uh, we expand to other parts of Nigeria and other parts of Africa, okay? And our focus is that by the end of 2025, all right, we want to have data about libraries on library tracker, okay? So that we have this data to know what libraries are doing on the continent. Which help do they need? How can we support them to improve the services? Okay, through the user feedback of this platform, how can they recommend services to be improved on a particular library? Because there has been a disconnect with the community and the libraries over time, and we're trying to bring back that connection through technology. With library selfie, with library tracker, we're trying to bring back that connection because people now are on their mobile phones, are on their tablets, doing A, B, C, D. So, and as library professionals, we should explore these platforms to engage them in a creative way, all right? And with Library Tracker, this is how we'll be getting to help us to work more on advocacy work for libraries. And also, library users can also use Library Tracker to access libraries anywhere they have, okay? To check on what libraries are doing, the services they offer, uh, resources they have, and even register for libraries. So it, it, it's a tech-driven solution to further support libraries and librarians work on the African continent, all right? And uh, we are very grateful to our, part, to our partner, Gute Institute, for being our partner and supporting us on this particular project. So uh, what we're really happy about is the data we're gonna get, because data is, is life. With data, you can make informed decisions to drive progress. With data, we can convince policymakers on what to do to do on libraries. With data, we can know what libraries, what the Chinese libraries are facing, and how best uh, can we uh, provide solutions to those challenges, okay? Because without data, believe me, we can't really do uh, much to support libraries on the African continent, to be precise. Thank you. Um, outside of Library Tracker, 
Um, can you share how Library Aid Africa's initiatives to improve digital literacy and te uh, technology access has expanded in Nigeria? Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question, Brittany. And um, I want to start back from Library Tracker, which we're using to, to get data about libraries uh, in Nigeria and another part of Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you have many thoughts, if you have followed some of our work, which we did library selfie, did the tech driven projects uh, to, to engage the community to the library to social media platforms. And the library's narrative as and, and an e library place. Okay? And aside that, we understand the fact that uh, we need to build the librarians of the future. Okay. And the future is now. All right. So if you have to build librarians of the future, they need to be equipped with the skills and knowledge to drive progress in a contemporary world. All right. So the reason why, and, and, and also test skills is, is essential to drive this process. The reason why we launched the Young African Library that scholarship, uh, which for the past, last year, we had the first court last year, where we trained uh, 37 young librarians across South African countries. Okay, so for, 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 for us to drive progress and with the way we, with our approach that we're trying to use as an organization, uh, we are working towards the capacity of young library professionals with the skills needed uh, to drive progress for digital literacy and technology access expansion in Nigeria. And aside that, the major thing we, we're trying to, to explore uh, going for the Cephanet broadband services in public libraries, okay? Because uh, personally, when, when I was in Nigeria using the public library in, in my country, uh, there was no internet access in, in, in the library. So most times I have to use my own personal mobile data to browse in the library. The library doesn't even have e-library resources. So, we're trying to explore possibilities to make sure the libraries, public libraries are functional e-library services, okay? And they have broadband internet services, services in the library for library users. So these are a few things we're trying to explore. Uh, some we have explored the library tracker, the geographic library that's fellowship for library selfie, but in terms of internet broadband services in public libraries and e-libraries for, for, for public libraries, these are things we, we plan to explore in the, in the next couple of months, so you can draft progress to libraries to help access e library services. What area um, of advocacy would you like to explore, uh, but you haven't had the opportunity yet? So that can come in the um, in the thought of maybe e resources um, that can come into um, physical technology, you know, computers, desktops. Um, what what initiative would you like to see Library Aid Africa take, but haven't had the opportunity? Yeah, um, uh, first thing first is to provide digital infrastructure for libraries uh, in Nigeria and that part of Africa, because uh, a lot of public libraries here lack digital infrastructure to provide services, and that is our top priority to see how we can explore how this infrastructure uh, in libraries. Okay. And the challenge is that, you know, having digital infrastructure is very, very expensive. You know that. And uh, we do not have resources to engage on such projects. And it's something we know that it is important. And the progress is to drive uh, across libraries. If libraries have digital infrastructure, so for services, okay? And that thing is, uh, that I mentioned earlier, is internet broadband services for libraries. This is a capital intensive project that needs a clear, sustainable plan uh, to, to drive progress for, which hopefully these are things we, we hope to do and to achieve. And, and, and lastly, is the, is the physical cohort of the National Library that's fellowship, okay, which we started last year. Last year that we had the fellowship was, a, was, a, was an online course, and it was quite interesting, but, but there's this different touch to physical engagement and learning process, which is very important. And, and one major thing we're trying to do this year is to have this year's course of Young African Library Dash Fellowship as a physical course. And we understand this will cost us resources because uh, we have participations from over from, from other African countries. For, for, for last year, uh, at the preliminary stage, we received 280 applications from 22 African countries. And we had to sort it down to just 37 participants across 12 African countries. So mobilizing those people to a single location, uh, logistics, these cost resources, okay? However, that will further improve engaging the learning process that we want to teach them. So those are the few things uh, we, we're trying to do, which uh, 
we've not had the resources uh, to push them to the to reality, which we believe that um, we'll be able to be able to achieve them as we proceed in our operations. And one thing we'll be able to do uh, with the difficulty that we have and the support we have from one of our partners, this institute, is library tracker, because library tracker is a dream come true for us as, as a project, looking at the prospects it, 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 it has, uh, it has and, and, and the impact it's going to make uh, on the community, on the library community, and on the African continent as a well. whole. Uh, let's see. Um, literacy is a large component of your mission of Library A Africa. So, um, how has that motivated your choice in partnerships and programs? Okay, so um, libraries of responsibility is to provide equitable access to information for all. And, and that goes to literacy, reading culture, knowledge development, and the likes. So what we do to, to, to see who do we work with and, and to motivate our part is to what we do, we do what we call the stakeholder, stakeholder mapping. Okay, this helps us to understand who do we need to engage in our activities and when do we engage them and how do we engage them. That is critical. Okay, so that has helped us to really identify would you engage for project A, B, C, D? Okay, currently we're financing our plan for library tracker to continue the project this year. And we realize we need to engage some stakeholders. So we already know when to engage them. And Britain, you were part of the budget dialogue that we had last year on library tracker. We had library stakeholders represented uh, in that dialogue. So stakeholder mapping is the top priority that we've been doing on each of our projects identify who to engage, when to engage them, and how to engage them in, in, in activities, okay? And also communicating impact, because can be doing so much more, and if you fail to communicate your impact, nobody knows about what you're doing, okay? And this is very strategic about how you communicate your impact. So that is one of the things uh, we, we, we work towards in, in terms of partnership, right? And also putting community first, with the community and users first, okay? What we are, what they are bringing, is it uh, gonna support the community? Is it going to improve access to knowledge? So that has been our top priority as an organization as you, as you, and also lastly is engaging government because no matter how beautiful your plan, your project is and your idea is, and you do not have uh, government backing, okay? Uh, it might be difficult to get validation or credibility of your initiative, okay? All right, and you should, you should be able to explore avenues to see how you can bring in government agencies uh, as your stakeholders. So earlier I mentioned stakeholder mapping, okay? How can you bring them together with you to see the, to see your vision and drive it with you? Are you getting my point? So basically that has been the approach we use and our motivation for partnerships. And also we believe in young people. I'm a young person myself, okay? And we explore avenues to engage young people like myself who are passionate about growth and development. Mm -hmm. Well, I see the opportunity of working with Library Aid Africa um, to be really beneficial to um, those who are interested in working in librarianship. I think it would be key in um, recruitment and a little bit of retention to be able to participate in some of these um, programs that you have and your social media initiatives. And so that's um, that's great for you all. And I hope that um, you have the ability to do that. How, how do you recruit uh, members who are interested or prospective members who are interested in participating in Library Aid Africa? Okay, uh, so our, our engagement is, is, is dependent on, on the kind of engagement. Is it partnership or is it, um, you know, it depends on, on the approach of what the, the person or the, or the entity wants us to do together. Okay, so it, it's totally dependent on what uh, the party is, is introducing, okay, and what we also hope to achieve with them. And if it aligns with our vision and mission of an organization, all right? Because uh, all our approach has been around access to knowledge and information, libraries, access to information. And we've been able to find the niche in that part. And over time, we've worked with a lot of partners, uh, both the Institute, World Reader, and some other partners to them project in Nigeria and other parts of Africa. 
So we work with Obsidian Woods Mission Alliance with ours, okay? And avenues whereby we can use to promote uh, what libraries are doing and other libraries are providing equitable access to information for us. So uh, our partnership, partnership and collaboration is a major component of our organization. And that is one of the major uh, progress that we've had over the past few years in organization. Uh, what can we expect from Library Aid Africa in 2021? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much for this question, Brittany. And uh, uh, last year uh, stretched us a lot as an organization due to the global pandemic. And that helped us to be much more creative with our approaches, actually. Okay. And our best to be able to drive progress. And building on that, uh, we be much more strategic this year on what to do to drive more impact. Okay, leveraging digital technology and engaging the community. Okay, of course, this year we'll have us our library solving series for this year, and also we're still going to have library tracker to collect the data about libraries uh, in Nigeria as a pilot for West Pan, so that's again countries. Okay, and of course, this year we'll have. Young African Library Dash Fellowship 2021 cohort, which we are open and believing uh, if you get the resources, it's going to be a physical session, a physical cohort, uh, either in Kigali or Nigeria. Okay. And uh, we also uh, we'll also be having a community library development project uh, to do for a community uh, in Nigeria, to sort of a library in a community uh, in, in Nigeria. And aside that, we have some other new projects we want to launch, uh, which are leveraging digital technology to engage the community to work more with libraries because uh, there's been a disconnect with the library and the community for a very long time. We're trying to bring that connection back to them. So uh, so this year, uh, these are the few things that I can mention, uh, which we've already done before. Okay, but other projects I want to do, uh, as time goes on, we will surely unveil them. And um, they are focused primarily on improving library services delivery, leveraging data technology, and citizen engagement approaches, okay, to, to drive progress for libraries, okay. So this year, uh, we, we are hopeful and uh, I'm believing that we're able to achieve our programs plan for this year. Uh, we just finalized our you know, strategy work for this year last week, and top priority we're doing this year is to communicate impact, okay. Last year, we did so much more. And we're trying to communicate our impact this year, this one we did last year. Uh, because for library service 2020 last year, uh, we learned from some of the countries are currently implementing uh, a new library project, project that has been funded by both institutes in those countries. So these are the impact stories uh, we will be speaking about. For instance, in Senegal, one of the winners implemented the community library project in Senegal already. Uh, in Tanzania, three of the winners will be implementing uh, projects which were funded. Uh, by, by our partner, the Institute on the project. So this will be more of communicating our impact, okay? And alongside with you, communicating our impact, we are implementing uh, and, and we we're gonna be continuing our project that we've started uh, last year uh, as as year goes by, uh, basically. So this year, uh, just 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 keep that with us on the social media platform and get to learn more about what we do. And possibly you'll we'll be receiving our uh, email from us about are all different what we're trying to do this year. Awesome, awesome. And, um, uh, and furthermore, uh, oh no, go ahead, go ahead. We're trying to further explore, if, if we explore uh, more partnership and collaboration that will support what we do here and to further reach the community at large and to further improve library services and further work more with library stakeholders on the African continent uh, as a whole. Well, I'm really excited about these projects. Um, for those of you who kind of came in late, um, these are his social media handles as well as uh, Library Aid Africa's Facebook page information. If you guys want to keep up with what Library Aid is doing, uh, Library Aid Africa is doing, um, I encourage you to follow the page, uh, share it with colleagues, share it with students who are. Um, in LIS programs, and they may be interested in international librarianship. Um, this is kind of what made me think about um, a webinar with this uh, type of um,
questioning, I was really interested in international librarianship and I've been interested for a while. And um, I hear people talk about it, but you know, they don't really talk about it as often. And so that's why Damilari is here today. Um, Damilari, I see a couple of new faces who weren't here in the last session. And I really just wanted you to kind of give some advice on um, what prospective international librarians should look into um, research the country that they're really interested in going, just what kind of advice would you give them on their journey? Okay, uh, first and foremost, international librarianship is very interesting and they get to explore, uh, get to learn more and meet some libraries. Okay, but however, you have a responsibility to learn yourself and to improve your capacity. Uh, myself as an example, I wasn't a library advocate while, while I was in library school. I have to go study on how I can advocate for libraries in my community. And, and even though I explore international librarianship, you need to have a clear definition of what you want to do in that particular space, okay? And identify which community do you want to uh, relate with. You know, I say I'm not a librarian, I'm a library advocate, okay? And, and that, is a, that is a particular path of choosing to follow uh, to advocate for libraries, okay? So if you want to focus on indigenous knowledge development, you want to focus on Training library, library professionals in African communities want to focus on uh, open access to resources. So it's dependent on what you think uh, works for you. And majorly, you're taking responsibility to drive this progress because nobody is going to come around to, to take you through, right? But you have the responsibility to, to take initiative yourself. And also, look up to, to, to those that have done something similar previously uh, that, that you're trying to do, discuss with them. Let them share experience with you on how they've done that in the past, okay? Uh, don't be shy to go ask for mentorship. Don't be shy to say, okay, I don't know this, I want to teach, teach me to the process, okay? So it's about uh, willing to learn. Mm -hmm. The continuous taste for knowledge. Uh, that, that's just, so when, when you're committed to learning and improving every day, uh, but not just improving, improving and learning strategically. So what you need to do in point A to get to point B to get to point C, you need to be able to, to, to visualize your growth trajectory and how you want to get there. And believe me, uh, it's going to be a wonderful experience. And I advise uh, you, you try to, to, to read uh, IFLA is publishing some blog spot about international librarianship for the, since last year. He has series of resources uh, that will further guide international librarianship. Okay, well, we are now moving into our Q and A um, portion of our webinar. Um, again, if you have questions, please feel free to put those in the chat. Um, it looks like we have one um, from Marcellus and his question was, um, what are some areas that you are providing support outside of Nigeria? And I'm assuming he probably means you alone and maybe not so much Library 8 Africa. Okay, Marcella, could you, is that what you mean? So I'll be able to know how to respond to the question. Um, as far as support, um, are you looking to uh, provide um, or collaborate with, with libraries, like spread the, the message of advocacy um, outside of Nigeria? Um, are you making inroads with, with other librarians in, in other areas of Africa to, to spread the program? Okay, okay. Thank you very much for your question and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, these are things we, we've been doing. Uh, our work is not limited to Nigeria alone. Uh, we, we explore reaching other African countries. Uh, as I said earlier, two libraries so uh, in 2019, it was across these African countries. Uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Namibia, Tanzania, and South Africa. And last year, it was across uh, non African countries, okay? Added to that were Ethiopia, Senegal, and Cordoba, all right? So, our initiative, uh, African Centered and African Focused, whereby we work with in country partners with their project, project, okay? So, for Library Sophie, you know, it's been a great working on across other African countries, all right? And also, uh, for Young African Library that's Fellowship, as I said earlier, this cut across all African countries, okay? Last year, we had 37 participants across 12 African countries. These are impacts to the work we do across other African countries, okay? 
And in because of the global, global pandemic last year, we did the virtual consultation, which we used to publish uh, a course version and guide for African libraries and librarians. So in, in the course of doing that, we partner with Kigali Public Library and the Library Services to launch uh, the call to action. So all our initiative has been around uh, engaging our stakeholders on the African continent and make sure that our projects reach uh, other other parts of, of Africa, okay? And, and lastly, the library tracker, as I mentioned earlier, we are collecting data about libraries across Africa, starting with Nigeria as a pilot, okay? And our goal is that by the end of 2025, we wanna have data across about libraries across Africa on library tracker. So we have a long-term programmatic plan to achieve that because the, the, the library issue is not, it's not only to Nigeria alone. When I travel to Ghana, Zimbabwe, another part of Africa, the same issue, we have the same thing happening around us, okay? And, and, and that has made us to prioritize uh, what we want to do as an organization and how we can strategically work with our partners uh, across West African countries, okay? So in terms of reaching other parts of Africa, this is our top priority of our, of, of our initiative. And this is something that we, uh, we, we are working towards relentlessly now. So we, we, we do not limit our projects only in Nigeria alone, which we explore reaching out to other parts of Africa where we can work together to drive progress with our partners, basically. Thank you. It's so interesting that you say that you've traveled to other countries and, and you've seen some similar problems that you've experienced in libraries in Nigeria. Um, how has that kind of helped you to uh, partner with other library advocacy groups? And if you have already, uh, what type of partnerships uh, have you all formed? Okay, so in, in the course of my engagement, um, moving around with African countries to attend conferences, I uh, endeavor to engage library stakeholders in those countries to explore possible partnership and collaboration. And, and as I said earlier, we partnered with Kigali Public Library to launch the call to action last year and partnership with the library services, okay? So our partnership with these in-country library stakeholders is dependent on what we want to do with them and mm -hmm. the realities on ground with them. Okay, and how best we can support their work. So we we'll get to listen to them and say, okay, what are the challenges you're facing? Uh, how can we support you? And how can we leverage in our resources that we have to work with the right progress? So uh, some weeks ago, I, I was with I was um, I was with the at Kigali, Kigali Public Library here in Kigali on what can we do together? Okay, and in the course of our discussion for over an hour, we're able to agree on five major action points uh, to, to partner with. With them to work on. So we try to hear from the in-country stakeholders to understand what are you going through, how can we work together, uh, how can we be of help, and how can we put our partner and collaborate to drive progress together. So basically, so we listen to them, get to know what they are facing, what they are going through, and we co-create solutions to solve these challenges and problems. So those issues that other countries are facing, are they um, issues regarding funding, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, and probably a lack of technology? Would you say those are common issues? Yeah, they, 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 all, they all similar. Yeah, they, they all similar issues, I'm telling you, right? Because I, I was in Big Force and I was discussing with, with, with library colleagues there. And it, it's the same similar thing, okay? And when we launched the call to action last year, uh, that I mentioned, we had a virtual consultation across where we had librarians across over 20 African countries attend the, the virtual consultation, uh, which brought about the, the, the course structure that we launched, which I've also shared the link to download it in the chat. It, it shows that libraries face similar challenges, and we, we agreed on three major action points. One, library leadership pro. Two, even libraries digital. And number three, my skills and training for library professionals. Those three things, are essential for growth for libraries in Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if adequately addressed over time, libraries will take a new face. And that is why as an organization, we have commenced this already through, through the training and skills. We have in the African Library Leaders Fellowship, uh, through uh, even libraries digital. Okay. We are creating innovative tech projects to put libraries on a, on a pedestal as 
uh, partners in development. Okay, so th these are things uh, we are working towards an organization as we drive progress. And however, we, we can't do this alone apparently. The reason why we have prioritized uh, stakeholder engagement. Okay, uh, library stakeholders in each country, reach out to them. Uh, what these are the things we're trying to do, and this is what we can do together to drive progress going forward. So uh, that has been uh, a part of our work uh, since we started as an organization. Okay, um, the degree that you're working on, um, is that for you to become a librarian? Is that the end result once you complete that degree? Oh, okay, okay, great. I never mentioned that, okay, I'm a master foundation scholar uh, studying global challenges at African Leadership University. And uh, we studying global challenges, I'm gonna major in, in, in libraries and access to information space uh, to, 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 to further guide my path in my solution. Uh, apparently, I've already started uh, some of these things already. However, my study here will further help me to strategically um, uh, improve for my work, okay, and also to further explore other big opportunities uh, to drive to that progress going forward, basically, yeah. Okay, okay. Does anybody else have any more questions for today? Okay, well, I think that concludes today's uh, webinar. I would like to thank you all for coming to the second part of our journey into international librarianship. Thank you so much, Damilari, for uh, speaking with us today um, and speaking with us uh, the week prior. Um, we have really enjoyed uh, what, what all you've had to say. Um, and we really enjoyed hearing about Library 8 Africa. And I look forward to seeing what you all will do um, in the years to come. And um, I'm just excited to see you all's growth and how you all are really engaging with the library community. That's really important. Um, before we close up today, I do wanna let you all know that we have a webinar on Wednesday, March 24th. Um, that webinar will be discussing uh, diversity in STEM librarianship recruitment and retention. Um, we have some really great speakers that day. Um, information regarding that registration, um, you can visit the NCLA uh, events and conference calendar to register. Again, that is Wednesday, March 24th. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email Marcellus or myself. Um, our email information is on our Remco webpage. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you again, Damalari.